Good morning and welcome to today's devotional. We will be finishing the book of Titus this morning. Now, if you remember, chapter one, Paul was talking to Titus about leadership within the church. Chapter two, he talked about right living within the church. And here in chapter three, he addresses right living outside the church. He tells us how one ought to live in society amongst the unbelievers. Christians need to be more than good parishioners within their church. We need to be good citizens in the society God has planted us. Now he starts off reminding us about a subject that he has talked about at length in other books of the Bible. So let's look at the first two verses. Verses one and two uh, say this. Um, this is in today's reading in chapter three. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, and showing every consideration for all men. Listen, there's some easy stuff here, and there is some hard stuff. It's just not, not that hard for a Christian to be peaceable, gentle, and show consideration to others. I just got off a day and a half fishing boat with a bunch of other Christian guys. We grinded through the day and the night, and we only caught one bluefin. 13 guys and only one fish caught. Yet still, all of the guys were peaceable and considerate. No one got mad and angry. No one started blaming each other or blaming the captain. The captain even said that we were one of the best and most considerate crews he has ever had. He felt horrible that he could not put us on the fish, but was so impressed at how we all had a good attitude through it. He even offered to take us out again at cost next time because he enjoyed us so much. You know, it's easy for us to be peaceable in the world, but let's look at the first couple things Paul told Titus to remind others about. They are not as easy. He says, remind them to be subject to rulers, to authority, to be obedient, and to malign no one. These ones are a little harder. Paul calls us to be subject to the governing rulers and authorities. In fact, in, in Romans 13, 1, he says this. He says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. In fact, all throughout the Bible, God calls us not only to obey, but also to honor our governing authorities. Now, this can be hard, and, and especially today as we watch this, the decisions being made by our state and federal governments. Even though our first allegiance is to God and the Bible, God says to follow and obey our government. Look, unless what our government tells us to do is against what God's laws say, our job is to honor and obey them. I wish that as Christians, we would turn all our energies from talking bad about our governing authorities and place all that energy on voting those that don't follow God out of office. Christians are great at disagreeing vocally with our government and we're bad at showing up to the polls but we gotta show honor to our government. Now let's keep going, as Paul does in verses three through 11. Paul goes from civic government to civil life. He starts off by provoking us to remember our old selves. Sometimes people who have been saved for a while forget who they were, how they acted, and how they thought before Christ set them free. But the problem is when we forget these things, we forget the amazing sacrifice and gift God gave us, and we tend to become frustrated with the very people God called us to be lights to and become critical of them. There's no doubt that sometimes living amongst people that don't know Jesus can be difficult, but we need to remember that is because they are headed in a completely different direction in life than we are. They have different goals, different priorities, the same goals and priorities that we once had. Paul reminds Titus and us that the only reason we're not stuck in sin like the rest of the world is because of the grace of God. Remember what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. It says that, that therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. They just haven't become new to these non-Christians yet. And maybe that's why God has put you in their life. We must show grace in light of the grace that's been shown to us. None of us cleaned up our lives and then got saved. We cannot change our natural state. We can clean up the outside. We can look like a Christian, talk like a Christian, and go to places that Christians should go, but that does not give us the Christian's heart. Only God can change us from the inside out. 
We need to have grace for people of this world and show them by our lives, our words, and our actions how good the Christian life can be. Now let's keep going, verses 9 through 11. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a factious man after a first and second warning, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. Here, Paul speaks strongly against distraction and division. Avoid foolish controversies, he says. He's talking mainly about the law and these Christians who are still claiming that the Jewish law needed to be followed in order to receive salvation. Paul says that's worthless talk and speaks sternly against those that stir up division. God has not called us to bunker down and hide from the world. He wants us to transform the world. Who do you know who needs to see Jesus today? Go show them Jesus. I hope you had a good time in Titus 3. Um, I know I did.